So we left off here. We've just begun talking about acids and bases in the pH scale. Um, let me remind you, before we did this, we were talking about hydrogen ions. Don't forget hydrogen ions because they're very important to understanding the pH scale, right? So uh, we learned that acids are chemical compounds. They're sort of like molecules that give out hydrogen ions when you put that chemical into a solution. And in biology, we're mostly thinking about water as a solution. Bases are compounds that accept hydrogen ions, or I usually think of them as donating hydroxide ions, a hydroxide ion. <clears throat> a hydroxide ion is this OH minus, all right, hydroxide. Now, the pH scale describes the acidity of a solution, and it goes from zero all the way to 14. If I ask you on an exam question, uh, what is the pH of 15 mean? You would say it's meaningless because the pH scale doesn't go up to 15. It only goes up to 14. It goes from zero to 14. The most acidic anything can be would be a pH of zero. The most alkaline a pH can be would be uh, a pH of 14. Neutral is right here in the middle. Now, what does this actually mean if we're thinking about the molecules inside of that solution, the atoms, the ions, and the molecules inside of that solution, right? Well, uh, before we go to that, I want to review with you a little bit about molecules. We've learned about atoms, and we're going to be learning about how atoms get stuck together by things called biological, by molecular bonds um, to create larger structures that are known as molecules, all right? That's why we've been studying the electrons. Um, one of the things you're gonna need to do on exam one is to recognize uh, molecular formulas like this. Now you're memorizing the different uh, atomic symbols, uh, symbols of elements. So you know that the H stands for hydrogen, the O stands for oxygen, and the C stands for what? Carbon, right, carbon, right? So this is a molecular formula, a real simple molecular formula. You need to know what it means. When we write H2O like this, we are saying that this is a molecule that's made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. That's what H2O means. This is a molecule that's made up of six atoms of carbon, 12 atoms of hydrogen, six atoms of oxygen, right? We'll get back to that in a little bit. I'm still trying to explain pHs, right? And what pH actually means. So let's think about water molecules. We know water is called H2O, and now you know why. It's because it's got two atoms of hydrogen and one atoms of, atom of oxygen in a single molecule. So they're put together by a molecular bond. If you have got a glass of pure water, if you've got a glass of pure water, then the pure water, let's turn that off. The glass of pure water has got lots and lots and lots and lots of water molecules in it. Now, in general, water molecules are pretty happy things, pretty happy, but, um, there are times when the water molecules will fight. I don't know if they fight, but they break up, okay? And if a water molecule were to break up, then the hydrogen leaves the hydroxide, okay? But that's not all. When one of the hydrogens wants to leave the H2O, the OH that's left behind says, fine, you can go but you are not taking the electron with you. And so the hydrogen that leaves, leaves as a hydrogen ion, and it leaves behind a hydroxide, right? Sad. So when a water molecule splits up, a hydrogen ion goes in one direction, the hydroxide goes in another direction. Maybe they'll bump into each other in the future. Maybe they'll get back together again. Maybe not, right? Now, there aren't very many of these that are broken apart inside of a glass of pure water. However, when this does happen, the number of hydrogen ions will always be equal to 
the number of hydroxide ions. Why would they not? If they started out together, H2O, then when they split apart, there will always be one um, hydroxide. Let me do this again. There will always be, no. There will always be one hydrogen ion for every hydroxide. Great, right? When, write this down, when the number of hydrogen ions is equal to the number of hydroxide ions, you have got a completely neutral pH. Let's go up here. So right here, the pH of distilled water is seven. It is neutral. And that is when, do you see how this is in blue? That is when the number of hydroxides is equal to the number of hydrogen ions. Great. Now, I asked you on your study guide, I hope you're working on your study guide, something about what's the relationship of pH to the ratio of hydrogen ions to hydroxide ions. And the truth is, when you have got more hydrogen ions than you have hydroxide ions, you have got a more acidic pH. The greater the hydrogen ions compared to the hydroxide, the more acidic the solution is. And on the opposite side, when you have got more um, hydroxides than you have hydrogen ions, you have an alkaline or a basic pH, right? So how would that happen? Because of acidic, um, because of acids. So HCl, HCl is a is hydrochloric acid. It's a good example of an acid. And acids are substances that will donate a hydrogen ion when um, they're put into water. So here we have got, sorry, here we have got a hydrochloric acid. And if I take this hydrochloric acid and put it into water, I will end up with hydrogen ions and they will and they will break apart from the chloride ion. Okay, so let's let's have another one. I'm going to put another HCl, and it'll break apart into another hydrogen ion and chloride ion. Right now, let's have another look at this solution. At this solution, we can see that we now have got one, two, three, four hydrogen ions, but we only have one, two hydroxides. When you have more hydrogen ions than you have hydroxide, you have got an alkaline solution. And I'm sorry, you have got, you've got it. I said that totally wrong. Oh, good thing this is being recorded. When you've got more hydrogen ions than you have got hydroxides, you have got an acidic solution. So the pH is now lower than seven. And how did that happen? You added acid, in this case, to water. All right? Now, here's another way of looking at the same information, except for now my pH scale is vertical instead of horizontal. You'll notice that at a neutral pH, like water, you have got here in this glass of water, one, two, three, four hydrogen ions, one, two, three, four hydroxides. When you've got an equal number of hydroxide and hydrogen ions, you've got a neutral pH. As I go into a basic solution, I only have two hydrogen ions and one, two, three, four, five, six hydroxides. Six hydroxides, only two hydrogen ions. I've got an alkaline pH. Six hydrogen ions and only two hydroxides. I've got an acidic solution. All right? So, uh, so make sure you know that. That's on your study guide because it's on the exam. Now let's talk about buffers. Buffers are also molecules, and buffers are substances that resist a pH change. What does that mean? Let me give you an example. Let's imagine I've got two glasses of water here, pure water, and I check their pH, and they're both a pH of seven. Great, okay. Now, one glass, it's gonna stay pure water. The other glass, I'm gonna take this glass of water and I'm going to put a buffer into it. I'm going to put this substance that resists a pH change. I'm putting that into that glass. Okay, I still got two glasses of water. This is pure water. This one's got a buffer in it. All right, set those down. Now, 
I'm gonna get two tablespoons of hydrochloric acid. Boom, I'm dumping the hydrochloric acid into my glasses. What will happen? Well, when I put hydrochloric acid into the glass of pure water, it is going to instantly become an acidic solution because I am going to have the hydrogen ions in the hydrochloric acid pop off of the um, chlorides. And so I will have an acidic solution. So in this glass of water, I've added hydrochloric acid. The pH might drop. Maybe it'll drop all the way down to three, maybe all the way down to two. I don't know, all right? But what's happening over here? Over here, I had water with a buffer in it. I put my hydrochloric acid in there, and very likely there will be no change in the pH of all. It still is a pH of seven. How does that happen? Buffers resist a pH change by doing this. They will accept hydrogen ions when there are too many hydrogen ions. And if there are not enough hydrogen ions, they will hand out hydrogen ions. So I think about buffers kind of like a damp sponge. And the water in the sponge is going to be analogous to hydrogen ions. So in a damp sponge, okay, the hydrogen ions are in there. Um, and if there are not enough hydrogen ions out there, I'm gonna give a little squeeze so that more hydrogen ions are out there and the pH is gonna stay the same. But over here, oh no, someone spilled hydrogen ions. I can take my damp sponge and I can soak up hydrogen ions, right? So that's the way buffers act. If there are too many hydrogen ions, because I just added hydrochloric acid into the solution, it soaks them up. On the other hand, if I had the buffer and instead of hydrochloric acid, I would have added sodium hydroxide, instead of the pH going up as it normally would, the buffer would release hydrogen ions to counteract the sodium hydroxide and I would still have a pH of seven. By the way, Another thing that used to confuse me is I got it in my head that the reason for um, an acidic pH was too many pluses, okay? And the reason for an alkaline pH was too many minuses. That's not true, okay? You'll notice that in even in this solution where I've got too many hydrogen ions, if I added up all the pluses and minuses, chloride is a minus, oh, chloride is a minus, plus, plus, all the pluses and minuses, they still add up, they still cancel each other out. Uh, an acidic pH is not too many pluses, and an alkaline pH is not too many minuses, no. It all has to do with the ratio of the hydrogen ions to the hydroxide ions. It all comes down to this, okay? So buffers, buffers, stabilize the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution. In your blood, there is a very important buffer called bicarbonate. We're gonna talk more about bicarbonate, super important for the reason why your heart beats faster when you exercise, the reason why you breathe faster when you exercise. Um, so uh, we're going to be talking about it. And it is a very important buffer. And the reason why I can, if I want to, eat a whole pack of Sour Patch Kids, lots of acid in it, and I don't have to worry about dying is because of this buffer. By the way, the pH of blood is actually not a pH of seven. I know you would think it was, but if I made the, your blood pH exactly seven right now, you would die quite horribly within the next couple hours. So the pH of blood is right around 7.4 in humans, in most mammals, by the way. And if the pH of blood falls below 7.35, we call that uh, health problem acidosis, Ad too much acid in the blood. So someday when you are in your clinical program, I want you to remember that when they call something acidosis, the pH of the patient's blood is actually not acid, right? 7.3, that's below 7.35, that's not acid, that's still alkaline. 
but it's too acid for human blood. So acidosis is when the pH of blood falls below the range of normal for a person and the range of normal for a person, we're going to learn is 7.35 to 7.45. Alrighty, we'll start there at the beginning of the next video.